I made the font nice and big for you all because you're probably watching this on your phone sitting on the... If you're learning Rust, you've probably written an if-else statement in another language, and you've probably written a switch statement as well. Rust has if-else statements, and they work pretty similarly to how they work in other languages, but there's also something called an if-let statement. And instead of switch statements, we have what's called a match statement. We're gonna cover both of those in this video. First, we'll need to cover something called destructuring, which we'll use in both match and if let statements. Destructuring is when you put an actual data structure on the left side of an equals symbol in a let statement. So I can do let and then a tuple, a comma b equals, and then another tuple, one comma two. When we do this, the compiler will automatically figure out which values to assign a and b based on what's on the right side of the equal sign. Make sure that works, yep, A is one and B is two. And you can do this with structs as well. So I could do struct thing and it has a number, it's a tuple struct. And then I can do let thing C equals thing five. This should assign five to the identifier C. So let's make sure that works. Cool, we get what we expect. That's the structuring and it's gonna come in handy when we start writing if let and match statements. In an effort to make this example a little more real world than most examples, we're actually gonna to connect to a Redis server and pull some data from it and then do some branching based on the data. So first we'll need to set up the Redis connection. Don't worry about how this works. It's not part of the core concepts that we're talking about in this video. We'll paste in some code here to set up that connection. Okay, now we have our Redis connection set up. We're using an environment variable called Redis CLI auth. That's where our password is. So I have that set in my terminal to get this to work. Our, our data is completely contrived where we have the moods of various people stored in our database and the format of the keys is name colon mood and that the value stored in that key is the mood of that person. Again, don't worry about how this Redis connection gets set up. That's not what we're focusing on this video. Now that we have our connection set up, the first thing we're gonna do is grab a value from the database. And the key that we're gonna get the value of is bob colon mood. Con.get is gonna return a result. So we could do dot unwrap, and that would panic if the result is of the error variant. Again, result has two potential variants, error and okay. We could also do unwrap or, and then specify a default string value that should be assigned to get result anytime con.get returns uh, an error variant. And we're gonna assume neutral. Let's run that and make sure that works. Okay, so in the database, we got the value of that key, which was really happy. That means con.get returned an okay variant because the value that we passed to unwrap or didn't get assigned to get result. In this case, it probably makes sense to use unwrap or because we just have a default value that we're assigning to get result in the case where con.get returns an error variant. But what if we wanna perform some more complex logic in the case where con.get returns an error? For that, we can use if let. We're gonna comment out the destructuring part so it doesn't pollute our output too much. We're gonna remove unwrap or. If let allows you to both check that a condition's true and destructure at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. So we can do if let, we can check to see if con.get return an okay variant. Okay, res equals get result. This means we actually successfully retrieved a value from the database. So we'll do print line got value from the database. And we can actually assign a value to this entire statement. So let Bob mood equals. So we're, we're defining Bob mood and we're assigning it to whatever the value returned by this entire statement is. And in the okay case, we're gonna enter this branch and print, and then we're gonna return res, which is actually the value that we assigned using destructuring in the if let statement. We do wanna handle the case where con.get returns an error variant. So that's gonna be the else block here. And we're just gonna print that we couldn't get the value.
and we're gonna return, so we wanna assign Bob mood something in the case where we couldn't get an actual value, so we're just gonna assume a default value in this case. So we'll just do string from, and we'll assume the mood is neutral. Notice that we didn't put any semicolons on lines 20 and 23. That's because we're actually returning the value from the if let statement and assigning it to Bob mood. Let's print out Bob mood. Make sure we got what we expect. Okay, we got the value from the database and the value was really happy. Let's change the key that we're getting from the database to something that doesn't exist, which is Alice mood. And it says we couldn't get the value from the database. It says Bob mood because of the name of the variable. It's really Alice's mood. That's the if let statement, which is a really handy way of checking for a condition and doing destructuring at the same time. Without if let, this would be a lot more verbose. You'd have to check for the condition and do the destructuring separately. What if we want to map these mood strings to emojis? For that, we're gonna look at something called a match statement. A match statement is a lot like a switch statement in other languages, but it can be a lot more powerful. Match statements are sort of like switch statements in that they have one or more arms, and each arm represents a potential value that the thing that we're matching could have. So we might have sad, and in the case that bob.mood is sad, we're gonna return a sad emoji. We only have one match arm for sad, and we have an error here. Obviously there's probably more values that we need to handle. What's going on here? So non-exhaustive patterns. The match values of type stir, and we're not matching all possible values. Match statements do have a concept of a default arm, an arm that's executed if none of the other arms match, and that's represented by an underscore. So that should make the compiler happy. Cool, so we got we actually hit that default arm because Bob's mood is not sad, this arm didn't match, so we went to the de default arm and evaluated the statement with this neutral emoji. Other things you can do in match statements that make them really powerful, you can use an or operator. So we could do angry or livid. So if Bob mood was angry or livid, this arm would match and we'd get the angry emoji. There's also something called guards, which allow you to specify an even more complex condition. So if s.contains, so we want this arm to match if Bob mood contains the word crazy anywhere in the word. Or s if s.contains happy. The conditions for each of these arms are checked one by one in the order that you write them. So the first arm would match if there was the word crazy anywhere in Bob underscore mood, even if it was crazy sad or crazy happy. So this arm would match and none of the other arms are run and you get this crazy emoji. So I've gone in the database and set Bob's mood to crazy happy. So it contains both the words crazy and happy. So if we run it now, we get a crazy emoji. If we swap these lines, so now happy comes first. We now get the sunglasses emoji. Again, these arms are evaluated one by one in the order that you write them. That's it for this video. I hope it helped you better understand if let statements and match statements. I've been seeing a lot of good pointers from people in the comments and I'd like us all to have a more kind of real-time connection. So please join the Discord if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.